Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we're rolling take two on this video because I realized I made an error when I designed the slide. So go ahead and change these two numbers for me, pretend like this never happened. And now let's read the problem here. It says to get a B in her math class, Lizzie needs to average between 80 and 90 on her tests. So that's why I knew I needed an 80 here and a 90 here. See this compound inequality? It says 80 is less than or equal to some ugly algebra thing, which should be less than 90. Her cor current scores are 78 and 77. She wonders what she will need to score on the third test in order to have a B average. Solve the inequality below to determine the necessary score on the third test in order to have a B average. Now I know a lot of students start feeling overwhelmed when they see a word problem, freak out even more when they see um, algebraic um, equations or inequalities or expressions that follow that word problem, but it makes me cheer because I don't need to interpret this word problem. Basically they did the work for me. They're telling me if I solve this inequality, right here, I'll have the answer. I'll know what Lizzie needs to score. So the only thing we need to do is tackle a little bit of ugly algebra. Uh, let's come over to the side here to give ourselves some room and I'm going to copy this down. So it says 80 is less than or equal to 78 plus 77 plus some unknown test score. There's her test scores. All divided by 3. See how that's an average right there? If you um, total uh, a list of numbers and just divide by th the number of uh, items in your data set or the number of numbers, you'll have an average. And that average is supposed to be strictly less than, sorry, 90. Okay, great. Now, this might look scary to solve, but it's actually pretty simple. Just like always when you're trying to solve, your goal is to get the letter alone. So my goal here is to get X alone. Well, X is involved with a lot of different numbers here, so to get him alone might be a little bit of a challenge. A really good rule for solving, whether you're solving equations or inequalities, is to do any simplifying, any forwards math that you know how to do before you start solving, doing the backwards math. Well, here's something I know how to do. 78 plus 77. In the midst of all this complex ugliness that might scare me, I know how to add 78 and 77. I'm going to do that. And so what will I have now? I'll now have 80 is less than or equal to, when I added 78 plus 77, I got 155. That 155 is still adding an X and still the whole thing is being divided by three. I haven't dealt with that yet. And that whole thing is less than 90. Great. So now I've done my simplifying. I'm going to now start solving. Again, solving is getting the letter alone and we solve by doing the opposite. And a lot of you guys are really good at solving equations. You know that whatever we do, we're gonna do to both sides. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna work this, to get this X alone by getting rid of the three and getting rid of the 155 by doing the opposite. So I'm gonna get rid of the three first. 155 is up there in the top of the fractions grouped with X and leave your groupings for longest. So we are going to get rid of the three first. So this three is under a fraction bar. It's currently dividing. I will do the opposite of dividing by three. The opposite of dividing by three is multiplying by three. Now, the rule of solving is you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to, and I usually say both sides of the equation, but we don't have a two-sided equation here. We actually have a three-sided thing. We have something on this side of an inequality sign, then here, then here. So I'm going to end up multiplying by 3 three times. I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by 3 and the right-hand side by 3. As long as I do the same thing to each one of the expressions, I, they will maintain the same relationship. Now let's see what my new inequality will be. 80 uh, times 3 is 240. I'll leave my inequality symbol. Multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 are opposites, so I have 155 plus x. I'll leave this inequality symbol, and 3 times 90 is 270. Almost done now, almost done now, but I need x to be alone. Uh, in order to get x alone here, I would need this 155 to zero out. Um, I will zero it out by minusing that 155. Now again, I can do whatever I want. Oh, I should have done that in a different color like I did before. As long as I keep my change balanced and do the same thing to every expression. So I'm going to minus 155 from the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I'm making the same exact change on each expression. Now let's see what my new inequality will be. 240 minus 155. 
and I'm using my TI. You would have your TI-30 excess calculator if you were doing this on the GED. Um, is less than or equal to, and then over here, 155 minus 155 is just zero, and zero plus x, of course, is x. So I have my just my x left, and my inequality sign, and then 270 minus 155 is 115. So what will she need to score on the third uh, test in order to have a B average? Well, it looks like she needs to score between 85 and 115 points. I don't know, there must be some serious extra credit on that test, but somewhere between 85 and 115. Great. Um, this is done. That is the solution. The score that she gets, the X, should be somewhere between 85 and 115. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. If you're feeling like this is a really challenging average problem, it sure is. I'm combining the most challenging uh, algebra concept, solving inequalities, uh, well, at least one of the most challenging that shows up on the GED with some, with some average language. Pretty tricky, um, but manageable. <laughs> All right, um, till next time.